Hey welcome back, in today's video we are going to see how we can use Linux sysinfo.h in Ruby C extension. Now if you search for sys, sysinfo.h and man page, you hopefully will get some man7.org page where the documentation can be found. Now we have to include the sysinfo.h library in our file and we can see various details like system uptime as of course long, it's not float. Uh, we can also see systems load average, total RAM, free RAM, buffer RAM, total swap, free swap, number of current process, etc. very fast. It is not opening files, I, I believe. It is just using probably the Linux API call to get the information. To start off, let's open our terminal and create a new directory called sysinfo. cd into sysinfo. And now let's create our xtconf.rb file. We will require mkmf and then create make file called maybe sysinfo. Now let's create our c file called sysinfo.c. We are going to use our previous approach and we will first include sys, sysinfo.h and also include stdio.h now we'll see how we can implement the c function without actually creating the extension for ruby now to do that i will create a function called main we have to remove that later on when writing the ruby c extension to do that i will write struct sysinfo and call it buffer like the previous video you can call it anything you want uh, they suggest using something like info but uh, we are going with buff here now let's call our sysinfo function with the address of buff. Now let's print something like the uptime. So as you can see the uptime is actually long. We will do maybe ld and get the buff.uptime here. Now if I compile and run this code, we get 57,412 which is my system uptime. If I do cat proc uptime, oops, um, proc uptime, I get something like this, 57,422, which is actually 10 second more. That's how we can call our sysinfo function. There are other things like, for example, the total RAM, which is actually the unsigned long. So if I compile and run this code, we get something like 8150. This is the RAM I have actually. So if I copy it, open our IRB, paste this number and divide with 10 to the power 9. We get 8.15 GB. If I um, actually divide it with uh, 1024 squared, I get 7772 but there's a problem with this approach um, there's also a thing called the MEM unit if I run MEM unit I guess the total RAM it returned before is actually divided with 1 okay which is actually the same thing for us but on systems like Raspberry Pi or maybe the 32-bit systems you can have integer overflows if you have a very big RAM for example you can have maybe uh, 8 gigabyte 32 gigabyte of RAM or swap in your 32 bit system there's a thing called physical address extension which lets you have more than 4 gigabyte of RAM but do note that in those architectures and with this PAE you will never ever use um, for more than 4 GB RAM for each application so in those cases, you will see that the MEM units it set to maybe the page size, which can be something like 4096. Um, you have to multiply that with 4096. In this case, you will not get integer overflows, but um, do keep it in mind. And there's no way to represent such big numbers in C. You have to use something like our um, Ruby C extension, or maybe you can use the GMP library or um, there are other big number libraries out there you can use them but there's no way natively to represent the number anyway so there's another thing uh, which is erroneous uh, if you just 
printf this sysinfo function it returns maybe one zero minus one something like that if you print that you get the zero here uh, and the one is actually the mem unit so the zero means that the function is successful on various systems like for example android which is really restrictive you may get a negative one here so if you get negative one you should consider it as erroneous um, maybe it is documented below okay so on success sysinfo returns zero on error minus one is returned so um, we have to check if it is actually valid or not to do that you can just define maybe something like car and status or maybe call it stat equals to sysinfo buff so in this case we are actually getting the status uh, that sysinfo returns so if stat is negative one we will return something else in our ruby c extension okay let's not think about that right now because uh, we need that later on but i want to show you something else so as you can see that here we have loads okay so also uh, anyway so on since linux 2.3.23 which is actually your kernel version for example the cur current kernel version that i am running is 5.10.16 Zen mod 1. Just skip the Zen mod part. It is actually 5.10.16 kernel I am running. So 2.3 is literally very, very old, like maybe a couple of decades old. So in new kernel versions, you will get these kind of things here. You can also see the total high and free high. Okay, uh, in addition. Uh, anyway, I'm just going to stick with the loads now because the loads is actually kind of different let's implement how we can see the loads and then we will return the loads as a ruby extension so to do that we will just uh, remove this printf here um, and we will keep the system buff we don't need the stat right now but um, when you're writing something in production you will consider this stat right um, we will do that in the c extension as i told anyway so um, let's now see what loads return loads actually returns an array of three items so if i um, maybe assign them to l1 l5 and l15 which are actually um, 1 5 and 15 minute loads so if you just cat out the proc load avj file you will see that we have three loads here so this is the one minute load which is actually if if you have a system full of loads 100 percent cpu usage you might see that this is kind of 15 16 or something like that so um you can see what kind of load you have given to your system in one minute this shows what kind of load you have given to your system in five minutes and this shows what load you have given to your system in 15 minutes so if you do something heavy operation, like maybe video rendering that cranks up your CPU usage, you will say this number gets cranked up every time. Okay, so these are the average loads and this is particularly helpful in servers. So even if your system is in 0% CPU usage right now, it could be 100% uh, one minute ago, right? So you can just cat out this file and see the 15 minute or maybe five minute load average. And get what kind of load you have given to your system so anyway now to uh, get our loads in c we can just probably do this right we can just maybe assign unsigned long l1 equals to buff dot loads zero the first item we can also uh, cut it and paste it three times call it l5 and l15 and get the second item here and also get the third item here so we can do this right um let's print the values print if um maybe unsigned long ld ld percent ld and print l1 l5 and l15 this should print the system load average right let's compile with clang just for fun so if i compile this with clang and run this we get something like 33408 47040 
and 61,984. So if I cat out again proc load average, you can see that it is actually 0 0.43, which makes zero sense. Uh, I mean, how could you get this number? To get this number, you have to do something very different. And that might not make much sense, but we have to do this. We need to assign a new variable called something like loads. Uh, you can call it anything. And you have to make sure it is actually a long double. Assign it to something like 1 dot zero which is a floating point number divide it with one bit shifted left by si load shift si load shift is defined in our sysinfo.h header file so you don't have to worry about that now if i print again the load here um okay capital lf sorry Uh, you can see that it is actually 0 0.0000015. So we have to multiply load with everything. I mean, load here, also multiply it with load. And here as well. Now, if I compile and run this code, we get 0. Because, yeah, of course, we have unsigned long. We have to convert it to long double, right? And do note that we don't have to multiply this with mem unit again because this is not actually memory it is returning, right? For example, the uptime. Uptime doesn't return uh, something in multiples of mem unit, right? So in these cases, uh, we don't need to multiply it. Um, okay, sorry. Again, we have to modify every um, LD to capital LF. If I compile and run this code, we get something like 1.02 or whatever. If we cut out our load average, we get 1.07 exactly like this. But let's um, also run this a dot out ampersand ampersand cat. So we get the um, we get the better figure. So as you can see, we have 0 0.97, 0 0.97. 0 0.795 0 0.80 which is actually rounded to two decimal places we get 0 0.80 and we also have 0 0.92 and as you can see we also have 0 0.93 here which is rounded to two decimal places now that's how we can get the load averages now let's uh, write it for our c extension so uh, the plan is to return an array uh, as the load averages. So we will have three items in the array. We'll just return rb array new from args. We will have three items. And that's it. Let's rename our function. Uh, it will return a value. And let's call it something like loads with underscores because I don't want to overwrite something. And let's take one argument called value obj. Create our function init uh, sysinfo uh, void init sysinfo. And let's define our global variable. Let's call it load obj and it will call loads then uh, it takes zero arguments if i compile it and run this code we'll get sysinfo.so but we don't need the so extension and we'll run p load avj um, we have error here because oh sorry i forgot to include the ruby.h we don't need stdao because uh, we have seen how we can print the values and we don't need to print anything again. I have written global variable here, so it, it should be global function. I'm not sure why I wrote that. We have something that crashes Ruby. Let's check it. RB array new from args. We have, uh, sorry, we have to actually convert this to um, long double to float. 
to convert double to float we'll do double to num double to num here as well and here as well we need to wrap everything in double to num Petify our code a bit and I think uh, we are done this should compile and run as you can see uh, it returns the load averages and if I cat proc um, load avj we get the similar values it reduced because maybe we have some less load on our system um, also we can do something like this we can remove this and we have the compiled code right so we can run while to do p load avj and in this we get this load average and you might see that it increases just wait for a moment because my cpu usage is cranked up and it should actually um, go up now let's stop it and uh, if we just give it more loads like maybe run some videos change windows um, and do such stuff it will be even more uh, as you can see it just cranks up we don't want to do that it might make my recording bad so i'll just close it and if i edit our c file again and let's get the uptime now okay so to get the uptime we will refine the function underscore uptime and again create a new struct called sysinfo and then create the character status or maybe stat equals to sysinfo and pass the address of buff to the sysinfo function and let's return the buff dot uptime but we need to also convert this to a value and this is actually returning a long uh, as you can remember from here so we'll do long to num and convert it to a ruby number also do keep in mind as i said that uh, sysin return minus one if it fails so we'll just return maybe q nil if this fails so we'll check if stat minus one will return q nil we can just do this in one line and let's define our function here as well uh, call uptime it will call uptime here and if i compile and run this code we get the uptime okay and uh, this is kind of similar if you want to get the total number of ram and things um, let's do that uh, and not be lazy value maybe call it total ram create our struct here and also do keep in mind that we can also define our struct here we can call it static struct uh, called sysinfo buff and we can just remove these declarations here but we need to pass the buffer to the sysinfo function because for example in uptime or maybe in load average it, it just changes over time right in case of total ram it it doesn't change total ram doesn't change in most cases you don't swap out and in ram and in case of uptime it changes so we have to always call this function anyway we'll create car stat the same thing here call the sysinfo function Pass the address of buff and check if stat equals to equals to minus one or we can also do if stat because um, if not stat because um, on success it will return always zero right we can always just remove minus one here and if not stat it will return q nil we will do the same thing here return q nil and then if it succeeds we'll return something like um, it is actually returning the total ram uh, multiplied with the memory unit size in bytes okay so um, 
actually this is divided with the uh, memory unit so we need to multiply that so we will return total ram i mean buff dot total ram uh, wrapped around the u long to num call it something like total ram and this will call our c function total ram if i compare on this code i get i mean it returns nil uh, which is strange um let's see what we did wrong if i do if stat return q nil it will always return nil right um quite the opposite actually in in c okay um i messed it up in c uh, zero is actually false right anything apart from zero is actually true so we have if stat so if it is not zero or maybe non-zero number will return q nil if it is something like zero we will not proceed anything and we will return u long to num or whatever converted now if i compile around this code again we get the uptime correctly and we don't need to check if it is a negative number or not because it is if success it will always return zero we can also get the total ram like this but there's a problem as you know that we need to multiply that with uh, something like the meme unit to multiply i'll not do that in c because c cannot represent such big numbers for example on a 32-bit system the maximum number that unsigned long long can return is actually from zero to 2 to the power of 32 minus 1 which is uh, kind of 4 billion something okay that's the maximum ram you can have for each process as well so um in this case we might have maybe 32 gigabytes of ram or you can create 32 gb of swap on your system in that case it will always be the mem unit is always going to be 4096 even for total ram you have changed your swap to 32 gb but the total ram may be 1 gb but you will see that the meme unit is it set to 4096 which is uh, which can be really devastating if you are uh, relying on the above the total ram so you need to return the u long to num multiplied with to multiply i will just write rb in turn and then multiply it with u long to num buff dot um, something like meme underscore unit and call rb punk call let's prettify our code a bit if i compile and run this code um it actually exists because uh, we need to also pass the number of arguments here if you can remember correctly um, this function will also take something like one we get the same number back we can also do something like rb func call v and public it will call the public function and multiplication is actually public function so we need to also pass the address of something let's call it meme unit and person meme unit and let's define the value meme unit here if i compile this code and run this code i get some syntax error because um okay i probably missed the semicolon here okay if i compile and run this code we get the same thing back so this is how you can implement the linux's sysinfo.h in ruby's extension now there are other things like the total high number of process for example this is written in unsigned short so to convert unsigned short you can use into fix or maybe something like u into num uh, because it is actually shorter than u into num right you can also do that and it might not waste as much memory as you might think also there are things like free swap total swap buffer ram so um if i edit my code and <laughs> let's convert it to something like total swap and I'm doing nothing else. So if I call total RAM, I get the total swap. If I cat proc swaps, I get that 
629-1452 value back. Actually, this is translated to kilobytes or maybe kibibytes. So um, we are getting this value. If I do something like maybe free minus h. So if I divide it with something like 1024, um, of course, squared, we get 6143. Um, this is the free, of course, so we have 6 gigabyte here. Now let's uh, again edit our code. And we are all done. Um, this is how you can create uh, CRuby extensions. You can remove the stdio.h, obviously. And uh, what's going on? Um, we have the total RAM. Okay, um, we are actually... <laughs> multiplying total ram with total ram we need to do mem unit and here it is total ram again this is uh, the 8 gb ram that i have so hopefully you have learned something new if so please press the like button subscribe and if you haven't enjoyed this video if you have any suggestions or constructive criticisms please leave them below so that i can improve this channel anyway thanks for watching and hope that you have a great day